Hey guys. Okay, so I see him. He's actually crossing one of these commode paths, heading towards one of those thickets. So guys, we're gonna go check him out. We're not, we're not gonna go up on him fast. We wanna get up on him slow, we don't wanna scare him. But I do see him. You guys ready to see an Eastern Diamondback? <laughs> property that we've hiked a few times and we actually came across an eastern diamondback rattlesnake that you know we've gone back numerous times and he's there uh, almost every time so we're gonna go out there and see if uh, he is there today and if he is we're gonna film him and talk about the eastern diamondback and we'll see if we are able to get him on camera and show you him up close I hope you enjoy this all right, so my dad and I, we just got to the plantation that uh, we've been coming here for many months now. And when we first got up here about two years ago, we started hiking different locations around the area. And while we were hiking on this big piece of property, we came across an Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. We've been back to this location numerous times, which I'm not gonna tell you where. And uh, we've been able to find this rattlesnake every single time when we've come to this property. It's about 11.30, 12 o'clock right now and this is the time he's normally out basking now he basks near an old gopher tortoise hole which is i don't think used anymore by gopher tortoise but he surely uses it and um we're gonna go see if we can find him and um we're gonna see if we can show him to you and i'm almost 100 percent positive that we are going to see him so come with me we're gonna look for other animals plus try to see this rattlesnake So when we're walking around this property, guys, we have to be very careful because not just the Eastern Diamondback, but we have the Pygmy Rattlesnake, we have the Copperhead, we have water moccasins up here. And, um, you know, so we have to keep our uh, wits about us and keep looking on the ground because, you know, I have found all the above snakes on this property, but it's just cool that we're able to find this rattlesnake in the same location. And anybody that goes out herping, looking for snakes, knows what I'm talking about. A lot of times, these snakes will stay in a location if they feel comfortable, they have the food source, and that's what this rattlesnake actually has done. He stayed in this location, which is pretty awesome. And that's another reason why I don't like to give the location up to anybody, because I don't want someone coming here and catching him or actually coming to kill him, because there are people out there that'll do that. But um, we're gonna search around the property as we're walking through, and um, we just have about a mile hike to go into, and then um, we'll see if we can find him. Alright guys, now for you lizard lovers, uh, this is kind of cool. Um, down south we have what's called the brown anole, it's a non-native lizard, but up here we have what's called the green anole, which was native to the whole state of Florida, but the brown anoles have ate them off. Um, I did find one, I'm going to see if I can catch them real quick just to show them to you. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to, they are fast and there's a lot of shrubbery here, but I'm going to see if I can catch them. All right, he's moving, he's moving. All right, guys, now, like I said, uh, this is a green anole. Um, I know he's not green, but they do tend to be green. Um, right now, he's in this leaf litter, so he's not as green as they normally are, but absolutely cool little lizard. Just want to show him to you. See the green 
on the top of this lizard. But uh, the green anole is our native species, which is really, after I moved up here, I wasn't expecting to see them, and that's all I see. I don't see any brown anoles, which is pretty cool. And I think it's uh, because of the cold weather up here. It does affect a lot of the different animals that we have that's invasive in South Florida. Can't survive up here in North Florida because of the harsh weather conditions that we do get. But I just want to show them to you. Check him out. He's really cool. He is turning more green now because I pulled him out of that leaf litter. But uh, just thought it'd be a cool little addition to show you as we're walking through. So I'm going to take him. I'm going to sit him down on the ground. And that is the green anole. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and let him go. And we're going to get back uh, looking for different animals. There you go, buddy. And there he goes. It's just another cool animal that we find up here, which I know people think it's just a, a lizard but uh, or a knoll, but it's really neat to see. All right, so let me grab my hook and we're gonna get back going. Hey guys, check this out. This is one of my worst nightmares. I don't do very well with spiders and I'm glad I'm watching because I was about to go through this area and you don't want to go through this. This is what's called the banana spider, the golden web spider. And they got the name because their web reflects a golden color, which is absolutely beautiful. But uh, it's anybody that goes out full wheeling uh, knows what I'm talking about. If you're first in line, you always get a face full of their uh, web. But um, I want to show them to you if you come over here. Now, I know it's going to be very hard to see, but he is right here. And I know you're not going to really see him. We've got to go to the other side and film because of his web. It's not going to focus. But guys, the golden web spider, the banana spider, um, they are a venomous spider, just like most of the other spiders. And their toxins are very dangerous and deadly to its prey. Insects, bugs, other spiders, lizards, things like that. But for humans, it can cause complications, but it's not going to be fatal. But um I'm not going to try to touch him. I'm not going to do anything. We're just going to see if we can get a close-up shot of him so you can just see how pretty these spiders actually are. Now, guys, because we're not getting a good focus on this uh, spider, we're going to see if my dad will walk in behind him and you'll see him come into frame. He's just going to put his hand behind him. We're not going to touch him. We're just going to do it because I think with his hand there, yeah, there we go. You can see the focus now, and now we're able to show him to you, which is absolutely, he is a stunning spider. I mean, like I said, I don't really uh, like them too much. They kind of freak me out, but seeing them out here is just really neat, and just thought it'd be cool to show you, and there is quite a bit of these guys out wandering, so just got to be careful you don't walk through their web. Thanks, Dad. You're brave. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're just gonna go back and see if we can't find anything else. All right guys, so uh, we actually set up the camera first. We actually saw the snake was there, so I wanted to set it up so you guys could see him sitting where he was. But um, you do notice he's right here in front of me. Um, not a very big snake, but... Um, so the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake is the largest venomous snake here in the United States. Um, they have the longest fangs here in the United States. Now their diet consists of, um, as they get older, rabbits, cottontail rabbits, birds, rodents, but um, absolutely stunning animal, and it's very awesome. It is just amazing that I can come out here around this time of day, every day, and see this amazing animal just laying here, just hanging out, sunning. Uh, he has got sun on his back, which I can see, and um, I'm gonna show you that den that he actually uh, lives in, which is only about 20 feet from us right here. But. Um, just an amazing animal. Now, I don't like to give the locations out to anybody because, you know, people have been known to come out and kill them or catch them, things like that. So we're not going to go there, but I just wanted you to see him. And that's why I'm not going to touch him because if I try to handle him and touch him, he might disappear. 
and he'll never be here again. So that's why I'm not going to mess with them. But absolutely awesome animal. I'm glad we saw him. I'm glad you got to see him. This is where we've actually found that this snake is living, okay? Which is this den that's right in front of me. Um, I've actually put a, a camera in it. It goes back pretty deep. Uh, it was a gopher tortoise den, but I don't think any gopher tortoise have been living in it for some time now. But guys, these dens are very important. These dens uh, provide homes for a lot of different animals that are out here. Um, different type of birds, rodents, tortoises, um, lizards, just a lot of uh, a variety of different animals. But in return, that supplies this snake with a food source. Now guys, you just saw that beautiful Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. Now, one thing I do want to point out before we do get off this property is that be snake aware. Here in Florida, we have four different species of venomous snake. We have the rattlesnakes, we have the Eastern, the pygmy, and the canebrake. Then we have the copperhead, we have the water moccasin, and the coral snake, which the coral snake is the most venomous snake in North America. It's related to the cobra, um, but I haven't found one of them in a long time, I hope. Um, but you did see it in the Costa Rica episodes where I did catch a coral snake while we were in Costa Rica. But uh, back to this snake, guys. They blend in very well with their surroundings. So I just want to tell you all, be snake aware. You know, if you're out hiking, jogging, riding bikes, you know, if you're coming across logs or cut branches, you know, before you crawl over them, make sure you look at your footing because Eastern Diamondbacks blend in, but not like the Copperhead. Copperheads, they're the same color as leaf litter and very hard to actually see them. So what I want my dad to do is, who's filming, I want him to pan over and look at the area where this snake is actually laying out sunning. And just so you know and aware of how well they actually camouflage. Now this is a three foot Eastern Diamondback and you can barely see him. You know, they're not dumb. They've learned how to survive and this is how they do it. They will blend in and that's how they hunt. They're ambush predators. They'll wait for that prey to come by, strike out and grab them, and then they'll follow that scent trail and then eat or devour that animal. But very excited I was able to show you this Eastern Diamondback. So we're gonna leave him be, let him do his thing, and um, we're gonna go ahead and head out. And um, who knows, we might find something on the way home.